we have a warm up. You know what to do. Go ahead and do the warm up, pause the video, and come back and see the solutions. All right, there are the warm up answers. Hopefully, you got them all right. Um, expand and simplify. So, we want to expand these and then simplify them. I'm going to do odds um, and then go ahead and do the even ones on your own. So, 3 to the 5th over 3 squared is going to expand to 3 times itself 5 times, so 5 of them, and 2 of them on the bottom. So because we've got a 3 on top and a 3 on the bottom, we can cancel. These cancel. So then our final answer is going to be 3 to the 3rd, since there are 3 3's left on the top um, and nothing left on the bottom. So we know it's over 1, but we wouldn't ever write it as over 1. We just write it as 3 to the 3rd, which is... 27. Number three. We have x to the fourth, so we're going to have four x's. x times x times x. And three x's on the bottom. Once again, we're going to get some ones that cancel. So an x on top and bottom, x on top and bottom, x on top and bottom. So our final answer is just x. And secondly, x to the 1, but we don't need that um, invisible 1 in our answer. So we'll just call it x. And last one. y times y times y times y times y. x times x. All right, this time we have no y's or x's to cancel that are on the top and the bottom. So my final answer is just y to the 5th, x squared on the bottom. Nothing we can do there. All right, go ahead and do the other three on your own, two, four, and six. Uh, pause the video, come back, and the answers will be there. All right, there are answers. We have 25 for number two, x cubed for number four. And number six was a little bit tricky. Uh, remember, negative exponent flips it to the top. So we're going to get x to the fourth, x squared over one. Um, expanded form, you would see one, two, three, four, five, six x's. So x to the sixth. So... What do you notice? Hopefully you notice we just subtract the exponents if, if it's the same base. So you'll notice here we have 3 to the 5th, 3 squared these two numbers over each other. Uh, so we just subtract the exponents 5 minus 2, and that gives us 3 to the third power. Same thing for this problem, x to the 4 over 3. If we do 4 minus 3, we get 1, x to the 1. Here we had 6 minus 4, which is 2, so that gives us the exponent of squared, 5 squared. 7 minus 4 is 3, x cubed. And this one's a little bit tricky, but if you think about it, 4 minus a negative 2, let me write that out, 4 minus a negative 2, that does equal 6, which gives us our exponent right there. So it still does work for negative exponents as well. Um, and then the very important part here, if it's the same base, notice here we don't have the same base. We have a y and we have x's, um, so therefore we don't subtract the, the numbers. So there's our quotient of power property rule. If we have the same base, x and x, and we just subtract the exponents. All right, we have some practice problems here. Once again, pause the video. Uh, go through, try them on your own, and then go ahead and resume the video and see how you did. All right, the first four are there for you. Um, I'm going to go through 5, 6, 7, and 8 just because they're a little bit tougher there. Uh, hopefully you did okay on those first four, though. So for this one, uh, we got to put a couple of our rules together. So we have m to the 5th, n to the 4th on top. And we have to look at our bottom. We have m to the 5th squared. So remember, if we have one base and an exponent to another exponent, then we multiply those. So 5 times 2 is going to be 10. So we're going to get m to the 10th, and n to the 1. Uh, if you just see a letter there without a exponent, uh, it's an invisible 1 that's there. 
And now this becomes a problem exactly like what we were doing. So subtract your exponents. 5 minus 10 is negative 5. And 4 minus 1 is going to be 3. Never leave your answer with a negative exponent in it. You always have to put it on the correct side of the fraction bar. So same thing here. You don't want to leave your answer with a negative exponent. Um, so you got to rewrite it. So this one's going to be come n cubed over m to the fifth when we rewrite that. Next problem. Okay. 5 minus 4 is 3 to the first. Uh, times 2, 4 minus 2 is going to be 2. And then times 4 to the 3 minus 6, negative 3. So we have to rewrite this as 3 times 2 squared over 4 cubed. A negative exponent flips the fraction. And then we can get an actual number for this. So 3 times 4, uh, 2 squared is 4. 4 cubed is going to be 64. So 12 over 64, which then we can reduce all the way down to 3 sixteenths. So 3 over 16. Uh, that's a 14. 3 over 16. And just how I did that was I thought to myself, okay, divide by 4, divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 64 divided by 4 is 16. So that is my final answer. Uh, number 7. Uh, we got to do a little work on the bottom first. Uh, we see some parentheses there, so we got to fix it up. So the top is going to stay d4, e to the third. Um, and then because the 2 has, is squaring the parentheses, everything inside the parentheses is getting squared. So d squared, e squared. Um, now we can do the subtraction, 4 minus 2, d2, and e3 minus 2 is 1, okay, which we would leave as just d squared e. And last one, we see everything is in parentheses to the fourth power, so we do have to take everything to the fourth. So when we put everything to the fourth, it's going to look like 3 to the fourth, d squared to the fourth, e to the fourth, f to the fourth. Um, and then we can just fine tune, uh, let me change colors real quick here. So when I do that, 3 to the 4th is going to be 81. d squared to the 4th, we have a power to a power, so we multiply our exponents, d to the 8th, over e4, f4. Uh, notice I know I'm done with this answer because there are no negative exponents. And there is no duplicate letters. If I had duplicate letters, that means you can still go further. But I have a D, an E, and an F, and then just the 81 there.